My name is Edward Davis and I'm a vertebrate paleontologist. I study extinct mammals and I particularly like extinct pronghorn antelope, which is why I call this Dr. Pronghorn's Make a Long Vlog. Today I'm going to show you how I made this uh, leather mini backpack using my new leather sewing machine. It's not that new, I've got several videos on it now. I started out with a veg tan high that had been pre-dyed at the factory. It's a nice black color. I've already got the pattern. I've got another video where I showed how I made the pattern. It's pretty straightforward. I'll put a link in the description and also a card up for you to find. The first part is just tracing the pattern. I didn't include the seam allowance in the pattern when I made it, so I have to use my dividers to make sure I give myself enough uh, seam allowance for sewing. And then cutting it all out. Here I am marking the piece for the outside pocket. Again, I didn't put the seam allowance in the pattern, so I'm using the dividers to give myself a seam allowance. Here I am cutting out the side pockets that go along the gusset. For all these, I, I usually cut a pretty wide piece first and then come back and cut closely. Uh, but for, for the gussets, pockets, since they're pretty squared off, I just went ahead and made the precise cuts here on the whole line. Yep, now you can see me making the more precise cuts. It's easier to manipulate the pieces when they're not in the whole hide, so that's why I cut out the big piece and then come back and cut the more precise lines on a smaller piece. Now I'm going to mark out the zipper length. I've got it marked on the pattern, so I just need to figure out how much zipper to cut. I want to make sure I leave myself uh, an adequate seam allowance on each end of the zipper as well. Then when you cut a zipper, you actually cut into the middle part of the zipper on each side, and then to keep it from unraveling, you need to just melt the ends off with the lighter. Here I'm cutting the gusset for the outside pocket. I made it a little bit smaller on this bag than I have on the previous two bags, if you look at my other videos. And then here I am sewing it together. You can see that there's some uh, abortive sewing on the sides there. I tried a couple of different ways to sew this together and I was having trouble getting it to work. Turned out I had misthreaded the sewing machine um, and that's what caused my problems. But it worked out in the end because I gave myself enough extra material that I was able to uh, cut off the parts where I screwed up the sewing and leave myself with clean material for the gusset, as you can see here. Ta -da. Then you got to work the zipper on. This is probably the hardest part of the whole process for me still is getting the zippers pulls onto the zipper tape. I always, uh, for a backpack, I like to put zippers on both ends. That way, if you need to put something in the middle, you can zip up both sides to it and have it kind of centered. Or if you need to get into either side, you can zip down from the middle to each side. Uh, it's pretty typical for backpack construction, but uh, a lot of people don't think about why they're made that way. Okay, so after sewing the two sides together on the gusset, then I sew the gusset onto the pocket front. And then here I am, like on the previous backpacks, marking it as the Xmas present it is. I had to toss that silver marker and just I hadn't given up the ghost. It wasn't going to work anymore. So there you go. Here I am marking the body of the bag for where that external pocket is going to fit onto it. And then to hold it in place for the stitching, I'm using this basting tape. So this tape is actually pretty substantial. People use it to make uh, card pockets for wallets and they last very well, but it, it wouldn't stand up to long-term use on something like this. So I basted tape it in and then I can go through with the sewing machine and sew in through the inside of the pocket. You can see on my other videos how I did this with hand stitching before, but this saves a whole lot of time. And uh, part of the reason why I have the zipper as long as I do in that external pocket is so I can open it up enough to be able to sew through the inside there to get it onto the body of the bag. I don't think it's a problem in the way it looks, and it makes it accessible too, but it's really a, a design decision for construction and not for appearance or function. So here I am cutting out the zipper for the main body of the bag and then making the gussets. These are much thicker because, of course, it's the body of the bag, and so it needs to have enough space to be able to hold all your goodies. And I'm sewing the zipper onto that gusset. I'd figured out my uh, problem with threading the machine at this point, and so everything was working much better. Because yeah, I went with the black leather, but then I used a blue thread to give it a little bit of a pop. 
think it, it looks nice in the places where the threads are visible. Then for getting those pockets sewed onto the gusset, I went ahead and did a little bit of skiving uh, to take down some of the thickness there where it's doubled over at the top. Here I am base taping it down to the gusset. I'm going to sew that across and then fold it up so that the edge will be hidden. I'm trying to minimize the number of raw edges on this piece. I do have raw edges by the zipper tape on the body and the pocket, but most of the raw edges are folded in on this bag. I had meant to fold the edges in on the zippers too, but uh, because of the threading problem on the machine, I wasn't getting it to throw, sew through that thickness. So here I am doing the, the sewing of the front of the bag onto the main gusset. And uh, just a matter of going all the way around with the sewing machine, much, much faster. It takes a job that is like over an hour long with hand sewing and, and it gets done in, in less than five minutes. And if I was more practiced with the machine, it would be even faster. I'm just, I'm going slow because I'm still learning how to use this machine. So here I am marking out the shoulder straps. I have to cut the ends so I can get the buckles onto the ends are going to be sewn in permanently. Uh, I'm using a different method for these straps than I have before. In the past, I've used uh, buckles with the tongue and adjustable uh, notches. This is going to be a a continuously adjustable strap that's looped in on itself with a couple of uh, a couple of uh, brass uh, D loops to hold everything together. So here I am marking out where the middle of these straps are. I use the sharpie because it'll show up even through the contact cement. I'm going to contact cement them all down, put it on then give myself 15 or 20 minutes for the contact cement to set up. There you go. If you want to see that watch, I actually put a new dial on that watch myself. I have a video of that too. I uh, got that watch through the watch gang box a year or so ago. I was dissatisfied with the dial, so I re redialed it myself. I'll put a link to that one in the chat. I'll put a little card up too. Here I am making, these are the ends, the loops that are going to attach to the main body of the bag. And then these double loops here are going to be on the ends of the straps. You'll see in a minute how they all fit together. But I have to tap them down. Remember that when you hit contact cement, that's what actually makes it stay. So you paint it on and let it dry. And then after it's dried 20 minutes, you can stick it to itself. But it won't be really thoroughly stuck unless you actually push it down hard with a hammer or a hydraulic press. And so that's why I'm hammering all these things together. Okay, then I gotta stitch them, so I'm gonna do two lines of stitching on each of these pieces, one on each side, and cut it out so you don't see all the stitching, but just giving you the overall idea. And again, this is the sort of thing that would have taken a couple of hours for each strap, hand sewing, and because it's all pretty straightforward, it takes really just like a minute for each strap with the sewing machine. It makes a big difference. In fact, the sewing machine makes this so much easier that I'm thinking about actually making these bags and selling them on my Etsy site because I think I could do it for a reasonable price now. So if you'd be interested in a bag like this, let me know. I think I'd have to charge about $200 just because of the material costs that go into it. Okay, here I am. I'm going to, not only did I stitch the ends, but I'm also going to set a copper rivet into the ends. This will make sure that the leather doesn't come unfolded, so I'm backing up that contact cement. I like copper rivets because copper doesn't actually work harden, doesn't fatigue over time, so they'll stay solid indefinitely. I'm going to hand peen it down here. I actually like the way it looks when you peen down these copper rivets to get this little idiosyncratic hand peened look to it. I restored this vise too and painted it orange myself, but that was before I was making YouTube videos. Don't have a video of that. So there you go, see how it works? The strap loops through the one strap on the body and then back across itself. And that way you can actually adjust the strap to whatever length you want it to. You're not stuck with the holes of a traditional tongue uh, buckle. So now what I've got to do is stitch the back of the body with the straps 
and uh, handle onto the gusset for the main body. So this is a turn bag, remember, so all the stitching is inside out. And what I don't show is that I actually basted the strap the straps onto that back piece. So I, I, you can see here a little bit of stitching where I've stitched the strap onto the back piece just to hold it in place while I'm doing the main stitching. Okay, there you go. And now it's ready to turn inside out. Oh wait, I'm gonna uh, cut off these little bits that are hanging off first. Clean that up. Once that's clean, it should be ready to invert. There it goes. Inside, out, and the last part is always the little corners, the bottom, the most difficult part. But ta-da, it worked pretty well. And honestly, it saved a ton of time compared to hand stitching the bags. Probably like at least six hours of time were saved by the sewing machine. Yeah, if I had to do it again, I'd just make the gusset a little bit thicker on that outside pocket. If you look at some of the other bags, I've experimented with several different thicknesses there, and this one I made thinner. I, I don't think I'd do that again. I didn't like it as much. But overall, I'm really happy with the design of this bag. I made it for my sister-in-law as part of our secret Santa. I hope she likes it too. Okay, so here I'm doing a final waterproofing with snow seal. Snow seal is a I guess it's intended for boots, but it's a really effective waterproofer for leather. It's got beeswax in it, but uh, to get it to work right, you have to heat it once you've got it on the leather. So that's what I use the hair dryer for, is just to get the leather hot enough so that the beeswax melts and goes into the pores. That helps it to last a lot longer. Then once it's done with the heating, you just buff it all out, and ta-da, waterproof. Merry Xmas 2021. So like I said before, I've got an Etsy shop. I might eventually sell these on my Etsy shop. I've got some dop kits, some tra you know little travel bags I've made that are for sale on the Etsy shop. I got a lot of keychains. I try to keep myself stocked up in silver dollar keychains. So take a look. I'll put a link to the Etsy shop in the description. You can also find it in my bio. Yeah, so there you go. That's how I made this leather mini backpack with my sewing machine like i said at least six hours less time than the last one i made using hand sewing but just as much love if you enjoyed watching this video let me know give me a comment tell me what you liked how you do it differently what colors you'd be interested in yeah and thanks for watching be safe